Hey guys, you're watching Team APS. I'm with Alec and Alex, and um, we were just thinking the other day that the themes and the art style in Yu-Gi-Oh! have actually changed a lot in the last, you know, 15 years or so. So, in today's video, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. Let's get started. Okay, so, um, Yu-Gi-Oh! It's been around for what? That came out 2002, 3? I practically so, grew up with it, I well, can't say. Maybe 13, 14 years? 13, 14 years. years. But something that I think a lot of people don't notice, and this isn't really something necessarily related to the competitive scene, is the art style in the game has changed quite a bit. The themes of, you know, archetypes and monsters and spells and traps and everything, it's changed a lot, and so I think that it's actually something that's kind of fun to look at. So we're gonna talk about it, uh, share our opinions on it, which one's better, which one's worse. Who wants to, I mean, stuff to say? Better, better or worse is really subjective. I wouldn't even say better or worse. Because I think it's more a matter of preference. What you'd rather or what you liked more. So set the stage. What was it like before, would you say? Well, Yu-Gi-Oh! back in the day, it was all about these ancient monsters. You, know, you were like a wizard controlling them. And then you had to fight other wizards by... You, by cursing them, like through different types of tortures, you know, yeah. those are traps. And like everything just kind of had a darker spin to it because Yu-Gi-Oh! was like a battle of life or death. Yeah. What would you say it is now? Well, you know, it's a be the easiest way to, to, to really see it was compare like the very first Yu-Gi-Oh! show, Duel, Ma Duel Monsters, whatever they called it. That's a good analogy. With to today, today's Zexal so and Arc 5 and stuff. Those are two very different themes. You have a darker theme with the original, with the blame items, people being sent to the shadow realm. Evil magic. Evil and magic. And now it's, hey, we and we have technology. Everything's bright and shiny. We're and happy. We go to school for Yu-Gi-Oh. You we know, all have six stuff. colors in our hair. Yeah. So it's a the show. So the themes have gone. And that and it's reflected in the cards as well. Something that really brought it to my attention was Alec and I, we were opening the Millennium Pack box opening watch that video. I'm um, on. And we did a little theme duel. And so it was kind of, as we were opening the packs, like we saw these cards where it's like Card of Demise and like Left Arm Offering and all these things where it's like, when you've been opening these new packs like Breakers of Shadow, like you see cool, like Pendulum Sorcerer and you know, like. Whatever other archetype what thing. What is a pendulum sorcerer? But we noticed, right. yeah, like back in the day, like those the cards that are themed after the original show are so much like darker. Like the spells and traps are like torture. Like they actually are, and then the monsters are kind of just these sort of ugly, feral, yes. you know, just vicious creatures. Yeah, yeah. Vicious or soulless. Like yeah, like read the flavor text on some of that stuff. Like it'll just be like evil thing that lives in the caves and <laughs> yes. tries to bite you know like anyone that comes close to it. They definitely didn't have any charisma to them, really. Not a lot of them at all. You don't think they did? Like, well, think about it this way. Did Bonlocks have charisma? Yeah, that's true. It's Hatsumi Giant. I can go on. Well, like, the cars themselves, like, individually didn't have that charisma, but I thought, together, it gave the game its own unique... Yeah, yeah you're right. But think about this way. In today's archetypes, we get things like um, Ritual Beast Tabor Lara, who is walking charisma... You have oh, I see what you're saying. your Necroz, you have all of that, st all these new things that have these poster child monsters Those that are like... Those things aren't new anymore. Give well, the thing is like the... Oh my god. I guess the archetypes in themselves have like, you know, their themes, which is cool, and that makes them kind of likable. Where it's like, oh, you know, I like the idea of like Ritual Beast, it's this girl, and she's on these cool, colorful monsters. But like, sometimes it just feels like it went from like, monsters that you should fear, to like, Anime girls and like cool mechs. They're like, yes. they're your best friends. They're your pals. Yeah, it's like, this is my Our signature pals. deck, you know, like cool, awesome. As opposed to like, you know, before where it was like, your deck was just the most vicious, powerful things you could find. Crush card virus. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. that is a, you know, those virus cards, if they all weren't disturbing, they're like, oh, you infect their deck and you kill their monsters before they can use them. Yeah, like, it <laughs> kind of made, I feel like it made Yu-Gi-Oh! the game feel like it was much more a battle of, like, who had the more ruthless tactics? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, like, you know, Merrick uses cards like Nightmare Wheel and, like, you know... Literally a torture device. Yeah, like, like, like the traps were torture, the spells were, like, spells. Yeah, they were... And, you know, and the monsters were just 
foul creatures that were just ready to attack everything. I mean, even look, look at like a heavy storm. Like you're, it's literally like a hurricane blowing down whatever is in its path. And now that's it's a like, spell. And like, what would you say it is? Anything now? What medolce and like wind ups? <laughs> it's and, like uh, yeah, yeah, our spells are really these archetype based things. Yeah, they and are. And they're all like they're not magic anymore. Not really. They're mostly like. Hey, these, this is him, him, and him doing this together. Yeah, I have it's noticed a, that a lot of spells like are just an like action than a spell. And the traps are basically the same thing. There's same, no yeah, same idea. And even if they're not like evil nowadays, now it's more like just like I'm thinking of cards like Breakthrough Skill, where it's just sort of a monster like crashing through a wall of like light mm -hmm. or energy or whatever it is. Like it's not, it's no longer physical. Like yeah. it used to be like you know this trap is like chained you up and like you know. <laughs> It's killing you. Is that good or bad, though? Like, uh, I don't think it's either. I mean, I think, once again, I think it's a matter of like of what they wanted Yu-Gi-Oh to be. But they want it to be that game of hardcore monsters and sorcerer. They want it to be an accessible, uh, an accessible anime-based card game that anyone could play. Yeah, like I don't know if that's good or bad either. I mean, I think it makes it more marketable and more like. 2015 16 popular yeah. you have to consider where they're coming from with it though at uh yugioh was bound to do well at first because it came out at the right time it caught a new generation by storm but after that new generation started to grow up times were changing pc was becoming more of a thing they had to get on the, the next generation coming up but they couldn't do it the same way because that the, the stuff that got us into yugioh wasn't going to keep working because a parents were going to be against it B, kids didn't care about the stuff that older kids were into anymore. Yeah. They had to market it for what kids like now. It's kind of like, you know, one other thing is there's less censorship in the cars because the cars are created where censorship doesn't matter. Like, yeah. you know how it used to be things like Harpy Lady and Bye, stuff Harpies. and all those, like, and those <laughs> random vanilla fairy monsters that would be like, oh, this thing's naked and they had it, you know, covered up in yeah. a TCG. Like, that stuff's not really here anymore because now it's like all these archetypes that are very controlled. A lot of times they just naturally wear clothing. Yeah, or their little cute nonsense. armor and stuff. And don't get me wrong, I mean, I kind of like what it is now. Like, I like Cosmos, like, that's cool. It's like, I guess because it's diverse, you know, it's really, really Like, now nice. they do, what, Cosmos, like, Burning Abyss and Noble Knights, where it's, like, based off of fairy tales or some Mortals, literature or yeah, something. Ancient myths. And that's neat, but... I mean, I kind of missed, the, like, the darkness. Yeah. Like, Opening that pack really, like, made me... Nostalgic? Well, I mean, not just nostalgic, but it's like this. Like, Yu Gi Oh used to be evil. <laughs> Left Arm Offering and like Card of Demise. Like, Card of Demise is literally like an axe is like slashing through your deck. It really does start to feel like a completely different game because those cards, they're so dark, they're so grim. And it's, creepy. It's, yeah. It does It does seem like you're playing a completely different game of using like the, the, these cards that are modded around, made around old Yu Gi Oh. That's probably why I like to play with Egyptian God cards. Like these cards aren't nice. They're not kind. They're yeah, not your friends. Yeah, yeah. Can talk to me, Giant was never your friend. Never. Your friend. Read the, and I think it also comes from like reading the flavor text, where like every monster it was like literally. It's like when you're going camping and like these are the things to watch out for the type of stories. thing. Where it's like this monster lives in this cave and like you know tries to strangle anything that comes by. Or this monster haunts the souls of like you know fallen warriors. Or this one eats small children. Yeah, like this thing you know. Praise on this and that. And like nowadays, I mean, A, there aren't as many vanillas to begin with. Yeah. But B, the monsters are just part of another cute little archetype of things that are just kind of like doing things. It's like, you know, we have those like vanilla pendulum cards, and you know, they're all, they are flavor text, but it's always like, yeah, he is the guard of the so and so empire. He's not really a bad guy. He's not a good guy either. You don't really know anything about him. He's just a guy. Yeah, he's nondescript. Like, well, well you know, um, there was th that whole, you know how machines have changed? Oh yeah, the machinery, yes. Yeah, like, back in the day you had Launcher Spider, Robotic Knight, Machine King. They, they didn't have... They were like built for destruction. They were legitimately machines and meant to destroy and they were for war. They didn't seem friendly. Yeah, they were like, yeah, they were like tools. Like a cannon or just like, this, is a, this yeah. just launches missiles at you. But today, machine monsters are freaking robots now. They're... They're your they're super robot wars. They're guns. But they're your pals they, too. They're your pals. Look at the gadgets, man. Or like, or you you know you they're warships. You know, Farm Girl calls on Forerunner and Dark Destroyer, and like you know that's just what they. Or like Draco Sack, where it's like yes, it's a, a ship, but like it's also just sort of. Yeah, I feel like they lost. It's, it's a cute ship that's like a dragon. And, I think. I wonder. I feel like machines have come to a point where you know that card like. 
where the, you know that where, like one car where they ru- they rust in the like rain, like acid rain. Yes, like acid rain. Like I feel like that wouldn't affect new machines because they don't rust at all. Yeah, these days everything's cute, and it's like yeah. I don't, it's hard to tell what I think about that. I mean, I just, I, I think it's funny to think about like. Old school Yu-Gi-Oh with their disgusting, ugly monsters. And then someone shows up like Geargy at these cute, cartoony gears with the big eyes. And I think the like, last thing, when did it, I wonder when it came about. I mean, I guess sort of starting with maybe gx It definitely started with basically. GX. Basically, I mean, like, because originally Yu-Gi-Oh, there weren't even, like, really that many archetypes. They were not. Oh, not really. Yu-Gi-Oh was so, changing pretty quick, I guess. So I guess maybe that's, you know, I think it all falls in line with the anime because GX was... A little bit lighter, I mean, darker later on, but lighter in theme initially. There, it's teens going to school. And the archetypes, they weren't necessarily dark anymore. I mean, yeah, look at they were just what they were. You saw what Cyrus played. You saw what Alexis played. I mean, no one actually played anything dark anymore. Even that is Destiny Heroes. Well, she played Cyber Dark Dragon, whatever things. Yeah, okay. but even then, those Something are like machines bad. based on things, yeah. as opposed to just ugly machine that's rusty and you find it. In a yeah, they weren't really changing, which you know. I mean, nah, that's, that's a conversation for another time. <laughs> yeah. If you want to hear what he had to say, get it to 5 million likes. <laughs> Kidding. Okay, so, um, viewers, we'd like to know, what do you think? I'm actually going to use that poll function that I completely forgot existed. <laughs> do you prefer the older, more, like, raw, grim, you know, raw. rustic, kind of grungy Yu-Gi-Oh with the cards that were, like, nasty and mean? Or do you prefer today's lollies and anime you know, protagonists and cute things that they ride on and like machines. But before you guys vote, how about we vote? Okay, yeah, there there are three of us, so my vote is for on the new Yu-Gi-Oh. I think I kinda like the new character to it. It's fun. Uh I play zombies. Old Yu Gi Oh. Sure um, we though. I'm gonna say for mine it's actually really tough. I'm gonna go with new. I while I appreciate the things that the old one like brought to the table, I appreciate the personality it had. I feel like today you can just find stuff you like. Like there's stuff that you like more. It's more memorable in that way. So yeah, I guess there's that diversity factor. Yeah, so nobody remembers Panther War anymore. I don't so I like how you saw it in the show. So we want to know. I'm gonna leave a poll um in the top corner of one side of the screen, and you guys can vote. Which do you like more? Old or new Yu-Gi-Oh, not in terms of gameplay, but in terms of themes and art style. And uh, that's the video. So a couple of things before we go. The first is that we're going to be opening like Shining Victories, and we're also giving it away. So while I was going to announce that when we opened the box, I decided to announce it now. We're doing a giveaway of a box of Shining Victories. It's provided by TCG Player. You're lucky dogs. Link in the description, as per usual, lots of ways to enter it and win, and that's going to be great and fun. And follow me on social media. So you'll know when I announce the winner, don't come messaging me like weeks later. When did you announce the winner? But you always get like 30 of those. There's no way all 30 of them are going to be. Yeah. Okay. They don't watch the videos. They just enter the giveaways. I mean, we wouldn't mind that. And um, that's basically it. Follow me on social media. Buy a Team APS playmat. Link in the description for that. Uh, check out TCG Player. Yeah. Description for that. Check Lots out LMPDO. Yeah. <laughs> also that. <laughs> so um, that's the video. Vote on the poll and we will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.